As we approach the end of the financial year, it's really important for the primary producers out there to give consideration to a number of measures that may minimise their tax payable at the year end. Now, this is the last year the instant asset write-off will apply in its current form, which is where um, as long as the business turns over less than $50 million per annum, um, any plant and equipment can be written off immediately in the year it's purchased. Um, next financial year, this will be reducing down to a limit of $20,000 um, instant deduction um, for equipment under that value. And the turnover is also reducing down to the small business um, threshold of $10 million. So that's one consideration around the plant and equipment side of things. Um, depending on what you're looking at, um, it can be new or secondhand to get that instant deduction. Now the second thing to look at is the other instant uh, deduction for Im more improvements around your properties. So for example, uh, fodder storage assets, so you know, grain, um, silos, um, hay sheds, all those type of things um, will be instantly deductible. Um, in the year that they're completed and utilised within your business as it stands at the moment. Um, in addition, you can get deductions for land care works, for example, vermin eradication, um, planting trees within um, particular parts of your farm to um, minimise erosion and so forth. Um, the next thing's also in relation to your, um, your water um, conveyance and also storage assets. So we're talking things like dams, pumps, pipes, um, travelling irrigators, all that type of thing. That's instantly deductible um, under the current rules. Um, so it's another thing to consider within your um, farming enterprise. The final thing I want to touch on though, this is more longer term planning and I think this is what's sometimes lost with some of these short term measures. It's considering within your farming enterprise, are you actually in the right structure? You know, a lot of our um, agri clients um, come to us and they've been in the same um, farming partnership for many years, as an example. Um, they're now at the point of needing to bring in um, the next generation and the partnership model just doesn't cater for that. So the structure that you're in is really important to protect your interests but also to help the next generation transition into the farm um, without paying undue tax um, and other costs along the way. Um, further to that point, we're seeing a record level of intergenerational farm transfers occur, and we expect this to continue um, over the next decade or, decade or two. With this in mind, it's really important to take advice um, regarding the ownership of your land and how you might be able to hold that and still retain control over it, but be in a position to pass it to the next generation, even when you choose, in a really tax effective manner. We've done a number of restructures to achieve this, um, and they've worked out extremely well, both for the current generation, but also for the next generation coming through. So there's a few tips you can consider. Um, and if all else fails, you can put some money in a farm management deposit.